Hi, you've clicked on to today's tropical tidbit for Wednesday, August 27th. The thoughts expressed in this video are mine alone, and in making decisions, please always consult the National Hurricane Center and National Weather Service, not me. Well, here's the Atlantic, and uh, there goes Hurricane Cristobal. Uh, <laughs> hard to get the pronunciation right there, but it's uh, finally showing up with an eye today. Still been kind of an ugly looking hurricane ever since it got designated. We've got dry air in the core, but the eye is there, so it, it looks a little bit more classic today. We'll be recurving uh, east of the United States and west of Bermuda, so not affecting any land areas, and it still may strengthen over the high latitudes some of these hurricanes encounter more unstable air farther north and tend to bomb out over the high latitude before turning extra tropical. So it still may be an entertaining storm to watch over the coming days, but it is leaving. Now elsewhere in the tropics, uh, look at what's going on in the northwestern Gulf. And we talked about last video how these old frontal boundaries that get down into the Gulf of Mexico in the middle of the summer over this hot water cannot be trusted. And even if the models show no development, and they have shown no development, but here we are with a closed circulation southeast of Texas. And so this is something we have to watch now just like we talked about. And there's a convection, what little there is northeast of the center. This is getting sheared because there's an upper level high over the southwest gulf and this clockwise flow around it is shearing 98L. That's, this is now an invest, 98L, out of the southwest. So it is pushing the convection away from the center. So that may prevent this from becoming a tropical storm. But it has probably another day before it finally moves ashore. You can see it's not moving very quickly. It'll slowly be pushed into Texas. So it still has some time to develop over the next day or so. And we may get a recon flight into it tomorrow, uh, but we'll have to see. So Texas will have to watch this in their backyard here. Homegrown development tends to occur with these fronts, and here we are looking at this. And uh, they'll probably enjoy this, honestly, for the rain that it's going to bring to these areas. They probably want the rain, uh, and this with the shear, this probably won't become very strong, but still may acquire a quick name before coming ashore, so keep an eye on it. We're also not done in the Gulf with this front, by the way, because this old frontal boundary, we've got this here, but there's another vorticity maximum farther to the southeast that the models show moving into the same area that 98L is in right now. So in two to three days, we may have to do this all over again with another vorticity maximum piling in. And what this means is basically a lot of rain probably only getting inland so far, but at least the Northwest Gulf and the coastal areas of Texas will probably be getting a lot of rain the next three or four days. So that's good news for them, but keep keep watching both this one and the one behind it to see if we get more development along this front over the next couple of days. Always have to watch those fronts, never trust them in the Gulf. Now elsewhere, uh, we talked about last video, the Raphael and Sandy example from 2012, when you have a hurricane exiting to the north like this, when this hurricane sets up the flow such that the trade winds are redirected out of the Caribbean north. Remember, the last time I made a video, we had no east-west flow in the Caribbean. It was all redirected north, and that's a very impressive pattern for late August. But when we get a hurricane that does that to the flow and then leaves, we have a resurgence of trade wind back into the Caribbean from the east. And you have to watch for buildup of convergence near the Lesser Antilles that pushes west and eventually becomes a development threat down the road in the Western Caribbean and Western Gulf of Mexico. And we see now that as Cristobal starts leaving, we see this pile up of air near the Lesser Antilles as this resurgence begins toward the west. And we have a tropical wave piling in here, vorticity coming off of South America. So now we have an elongated vorticity zone or spin. Just like we had with Cristobal, we had a, a monsoon trough out here that looked very much like this. This one is farther west. And what happened with Cristobal is that the northern part eventually caught up with the southern part and they met up together and became a more amplified singular wave that eventually became a tropical cyclone. Sometimes though, these northern parts can go off and do their own thing down the line. So we may end up with two separate areas of disturbed weather, one moving towards Central America, the other farther north. And uh, we'll have to see there, but uh, this may come toward the west and try to develop in either one or two different areas. And uh, this is, again, the pattern we have to watch. When the hurricane leaves five to seven days later, watch for the resurgence of trade wind to the west and watch the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico. And we can see the model starting to pick up on this now. It was not showing this a couple of days ago. And now we see it, uh, some of the GFS ensemble members showing development in the western Gulf. And then you can see a couple of them showing the northern part of the wave splitting off. Again, these two areas come from the same place back here. Again, the northern part 
part can sometimes go its own direction and so we have a couple members showing development in two different places here but um, don't take these as exact forecasts because five to seven days down the line we may not get development exactly in here we could get it earlier we could get it farther north it's really hard to say when we have a broad area of low pressure and vorticity that does not have a defined center remember we we found this out with crystal ball right you cannot know very much about the future evolution of the system if it's elongated because anywhere in this elongated area anywhere in the area I just circled we could see some kind of low pressure develop so we have to see that happen before we're going to know for sure if we're going to have a development threat right in the Bay of Campeche or maybe farther north or even at the northern part getting into the Bahamas so it's very hard to say at this point but the overall pattern is what I want you to pick up on that this kind of an area moving west after a hurricane lifts out has to be watched farther west in about four to seven days after the hurricane leaves so we will be watching that pattern and here's the uh, NHC outlook uh, again looking at the Northwest Gulf and this area near Central America that we talked about last video these two areas have to be watched and then there's more tropical waves coming off Africa that we're going to have to watch this time of year almost any wave that comes off has at least a small chance of developing so this peak of the hurricane season is the time when we start really watching the tropics you should always have that in the back of your mind when you're looking at the weather and make sure you have a hurricane plan because even though in a quiet year like this there's still chances for development you can see the tropics heating up and it only takes one storm impacting your area to cause problems so make sure you have a plan please be prepared all right that's it for today thanks for watching